Tem som isto? So, 500 students seems like a lot, right? I'm only a professor for five years. Most of my life, I didn't want to be a professor. Actually, when I measured, I thought to myself, I promised to myself I wouldn't enter a university campus again. I was so tired of studying. I wanted to do real things. I wanted to develop software in several companies, which I did. So, how do I got there? After nine years, I broke my promise. I entered the campus again to do a PhD. But my goal was not to become a professor again. It was to create a startup based on the research I was doing in the PhD. I even went to the States for some time trying to promote my idea, but I failed. It's okay, I learned a lot. I came back to Portugal and now I have a PhD. What can I do? I become a professor. I started giving classes slowly while keeping my job in the software companies. And then I liked it more and more. And now I'm a full-time professor. So the first time I started to teach, I didn't know how to do it. I thought like this. The students don't know a certain subject, and by the end of the course, they will have to know that subject. I know that subject, so I will pass that knowledge to them. I will pass that knowledge as clearly and as simple as possible. And I thought it was going okay, it was doing okay, uh, until I handed my first assignment. And they failed, it was terrible, and I was depressed. So what is going on here? There's a difference between teaching and students learning. Teaching is like passing knowledge. If I can use uh, jargon from the IT industry, it's uh, knowledge transfer, right? The, the professor, the teacher transfers knowledge to the students. That doesn't work. Students have to learn that knowledge. So, ah, and, and another thing is that the times have changed and this knowledge transfer type of teaching doesn't make sense anymore because students can get that knowledge from several channels. They can get from online courses, very good online courses from MIT, Stanford, Harvard. I can't compete with that. Students can have Stack Overflow, they have blogs. So what is my job here, actually? Is it giving grades just because the knowledge they get somewhere else? So I started thinking about that and I realized that my goal was to motivate students to learn. They are not very eager to learn when they come to, to school. They are not, let's be honest, they are not super happy coming to classes, right? Uh, they are kind of forced. Uh, some of them may like it, but most of them don't like it or are just there because they have to. So my goal is to motivate them to learn because they can't learn if they are not motivated. And I tried several things. I, some of them were successful, some of them don't. And I will talk about two that were successful. One of them is I changed the way I lectured. I was inspired by Netflix. Every class of mine is like an episode that fits into a compelling story, uh, like a piece of a puzzle, and have several obstacles, like any good TV series scripts, where a hero, in this case the students, have to overcome those obstacles. And I start every episode with one of these obstacles. And you can see here the slides which I use to start the classes. At the beginning, the students look to them and think, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. But there is a tension like there is in the episodes of a TV series. And I slowly uh, teach them some techniques, some algorithms, some programming techniques that they can use to achieve this goal. 
and by the end of the episode or the class, they can do it. But there is still something missing, and they have to wait for the next episode so they come back for the next class. So that's one idea to motivate them to learn. The other is trying to go from extrinsic motivation to intrinsic motivation. What does this mean? Intrinsic motivation is when you are motivated just by the pleasure of doing something. Sometimes you, are, you don't have that pleasure, you are just motivated for money or uh, for grades in the case of the students. So when the students try to learn only motivated by grades, that doesn't work so well. I want them to learn because they want to, inner, the, the, that inner feeling of wanting to learn. So I tried one thing. I gave them a challenge. I gave them a skeleton of a application like Paint. You can see here some examples. This was the first time they were programming something graphical, because, uh, so I thought they would be enthusiastic about it. And um, they had to surprise me. The challenge was invent some feature in Paint that nobody had thought about and uh, surprise me. And I, I said, it's optional, but it will be fun. It was not enough. Nobody do it. So the next week, I changed a little bit. I said, OK, if you surprise me, I will give you some bonus points. But not many, just 0 0.3 points in 20. Not 3 points in 20, 0 0.3. It was enough for many students to grab this challenge. I think they thought, oh, in 15 minutes, I can do something. And it's 0 0.3 points, OK. But once they started, they spent hours trying new things. So I by using extrinsic motivation, I was able to push, their, to, to, to push their intrinsic motivation out. But so I'm doing this job of going from transferring knowledge to motivating students to learn. But I think it's not the end of it. I'm more ambitious now. I think the ultimate goal of any educational system is not only to motivate students to learn or transferring knowledge, is to do this transformation. Because students arrive at my classes with very low self-esteem and self-confidence. And they have to have this self-confidence to overcome the obstacles they will face in their life. I will end with a story about this. I had one student that was struggling to complete the programming project in a course. The programming project had to pass at least half of the automatic tests that we teachers set up. If it didn't pass half, he wouldn't get approval in the course. So he tried, and by the end of the semester, he wasn't able to do it. So he had a second chance on an extra uh, period, second epoch, and he tried again and he failed again. He was desperate when he came to me asking for help. So during the summer, I sit with him and test by test, I explained what he had to do. And he was able to improve until he got to half of the tests. When he got to half of the tests and he was approved, I said, congratulations, you can go home. You, have, you are approved. And he said, mm, I think I can do one more test. And I said, OK, but I have to go home now. Maybe you can do tomorrow that. I can help you tomorrow. OK. The next day, I received an email with him saying, I, I accomplished the one more test. And I could do it alone. I didn't need your help. And he said that was the most happy moment of his life as a student in the university. Not getting the approval, not passing half of the tests, that extra test that he was able to do without my help was what was most happy for him. So if I can do that with all the other students, my job will be done as a professor. Thank you.